morning and a very warm welcome to St. Mark's for our service of uh, morning prayer. Uh, it's great to be able to uh, welcome you and uh, it's great to be back um, ourselves as well. Uh, really good to, uh, to see you. Welcome if you're joining us online as well. Um, the, uh, the, hy- the hymns that I will announce and you can find them separately on uh, YouTube. And I'm delighted that with the new uh, arrangements, um, we are able to sing. Um, so uh, do, uh, do sing uh, when the time comes. We'll continue to have the, the songs on, uh, on the screen if you're here at the, uh, at the service. Um, but, uh, uh, if you feel comfortable keeping your face covering on to sing, then uh, please do that. Uh, but we can sing. thinking about enjoying uh, the good God today. I wonder if you ever think about what Christians will be doing uh, for eternity, what we will be doing for forever. Well, here's our answer. We'll be worshipping, praising, and enjoying our good God. That makes sense, doesn't it, to get into practice now. Do you ever take time to praise God uh, for who he is? Just uh, enjoy him. Well, it's a great thing to be doing, and we're going to uh, do that during our time today. It's what we were made for. Let's say the words uh, from Psalm 27 together. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, we praise you uh, for your beauty. We praise you for your goodness. We praise you for your love. Thank you that we will spend eternity uh, enjoying you and adoring you and praising you for your uh, goodness and your love towards us. Please would you help us now during this time to grasp more of that love and that goodness so that we worship you as you are due in this coming week. Amen. We're going to sing. Um, I realised that going through the the hymns that we've done over uh, the last few months, we haven't actually uh, done this one for quite a while, so it's great that we can actually sing it. Um, uh, Why don't we stand, if we feel able to, uh, to praise my soul, the King of Heaven. Well, I can tell we've all been uh, keeping in practice over the last 18 months with uh, our singing. Well done. Let's pray. We do praise you, King of Heaven, everlasting King, our Father. Praise you for who you are, your grace, your favor, your faithfulness, supremely in your sending your Son to reveal what you are like and to die for us, that we might be reconciled to you, brought into your family. Thank you for sustaining us over these uh, months. Thank you for all your goodness to us. Help us to enjoy you and to worship you today and this week, we pray. Amen. Please sit down. And uh, Gordon has uh, something to share for a couple of minutes. Um, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> 
was once someone who uh, was considering whether to come to work with me. And um, he let it slip that he thought we were all too old. Uh, and I said to him, uh, well, sometimes you have to uh, have a few years before you learn to be young at heart. And uh, so this is a, a slot for children, but it's for everybody. I hope you'll be uh, interactive and shout out. Um, have you ever looked forward to anything? What, what can you think of an example of what you've looked forward to? Holidays. Holidays. Sorry? Cup finals. <clears throat> Why do you look forward to it? Them. You, you enjoy them. Uh, there's something different. What does looking forward to something feel like? Exciting. Uh, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Mainly a good thing. Um, what? What's difficult about looking forward to something in excitement? In, yeah, in case it doesn't happen, or being patient. Sometimes the excitement takes over, doesn't it? Does anybody have a favorite place? Uh, better than anywhere else? How much better is it than anywhere else? Can you put a figure on it? Ten times better. Yeah. Why do you like it, do you think? Warmer. <laughs> yeah. We've had all sorts of weather in the last uh, fortnight, haven't we? Uh, what's it like when you're traveling to your favorite place? Exciting. Yes. Um, yeah, um, Psalm 84 is about being excited to be with God and what the Christian life on the way to heaven feels like and realizing that being with God is miles better than anything else and being anywhere else. Um, and I hope we'll find some of that excitement uh, and looking forward to something that we've been thinking about now. Well, then we can all tell each other afterwards what our favorite places are. Um, we're going to uh, listen or sing to uh, a song, uh, particularly for children, but uh, for all of us, uh, reminding us of God's character, that he is good, he is gracious, he's our creator. Um, if you don't know the words, then do just listen uh, or join in when you feel uh, ready to. Uh, again, let's stand if we feel able to. Uh, take a seat and once again a very warm welcome uh, this morning particularly if you've joined us since uh, we started um, hopefully you have a uh, copy of the prayer diary um, for August and uh, do pray through that um, with us through the month of August um, and uh, the notices are on the back of the service sheet uh, which you received as you came in. Um, <clears throat> so I'll just draw attention to one or two things. Um, you'll see uh, a notice about the changes to Sunday worship from the 25th of July. Uh, we're sort of finding our way on this, so we uh, do value your input and your thoughts on uh, how we should be um, uh, doing things. Uh, we felt that it was, that now that there are 
hardly any restrictions um, from, from the government. Um, uh, we thought it was important that we were able to sing for those who would like to be able to sing. Um, we're able to keep on with social distancing, um, uh, so w which is great, and that's really helpful. Um, uh, in terms of face coverings, um, they're not compulsory, as you'll know, but we are saying that if you feel able to wear one, then please do, um, but please don't feel that you have to. Um, and we will continue to monitor uh, things. So as I say, if you, if you sort of have strong feelings about this, then do have a word with me or a warden or a member of the PCC. And um, we hope that over time, um, everyone will feel comfortable and able to uh, rejoin us in uh, worshipping together on uh, Sundays. Um, <clears throat> and do encourage others uh, to, to join us. If you know someone who hasn't been for a while um, and uh, you think would benefit from, which I take it as everybody, uh, then uh, do, do encourage them to think about join, joining us. Um, Tuesday evening, uh, we are continuing our series, Christianity, Answers and Evidence. Alistair um, started that last Tuesday, and um, I know those who were here found it incredibly uh, helpful and stimulating. So there's, uh, he's, he's going to give some input on evidence for Christianity, and uh, there'll also be a chance for discussion. So uh, if you're free on Tuesday evening, do join us here. You don't have to have been last week, um, uh, so do join us 7.30 um, here at St. Mark's. And then uh, next Sunday, just so you're aware, um, we have two very important services. In the morning, we're going to be thanking God for uh, Samuel Newbury um, uh, in this uh, service. And then in the afternoon, we're going to be um, baptizing Arthur and Lily uh, Williams. So um, do hope you're able to be with us uh, next Sunday at one of those services. And then I have uh, some bands of marriage between, uh, I published the bands of marriage between David Kenneth Good and Ella Marie Bentley, both single of the parish of All Saints Hesel. Uh, this is the third time of asking. If anyone knows any reason in law why they may not marry, please do let me know afterwards. It would be good to pray for David and Ella. It would also be good to pray for Ben and Lucy, who were married yesterday, uh, Ben and Lucy Wood, um, who many of us know. Uh, so um, let's pray for those couples. Heavenly Father, we thank you that in our earthly lives, you speak to us of your eternal life. We ask that through their marriage, these couples may grow to know you more clearly, learn to love you more dearly, and discover the joy of following you more nearly day by day. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, we're going to spend some time talking to God now. Um, uh, as we gather, it's appropriate to confess that we haven't always worshipped and enjoyed uh, God first this week. We've looked to other things to satisfy us, I know I have. Uh, God says this through the prophet Jeremiah. My people have committed two sins. They have forsaken me, the spring of living water, and have dug their own systems, broken systems that cannot hold water. So we look often to other things to satisfy us when actually other things cannot satisfy us. Only God can. So let's uh, confess together using the words in bold type. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world 
that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Amen. We say together, our God fulfills his promises and is true to his word. We have confessed our sins. God has forgiven us because Christ died for us. Amen. Let's continue in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are good. We thank you that you are uh, the one who made us, that we might know you, that we might be satisfied in you. We pray that this week we might uh, take time to enjoy you, to enjoy who you are, to enjoy uh, all that you have done for us. Please, would we more and more be satisfied in you above all other things and look forward to that day when we will see you face to face and enjoy you for all eternity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, as uh, the world is focused on Japan for the Tokyo Olympics, we thank you for uh, the uh, Christians who live in that nation. We thank you for uh, the churches which seek to uh, shepherd your people and to uh, share the good news of Jesus with others. We thank you for uh, Adam Young's application uh, to OMF that it's been accepted and he will be going to uh, pastor and uh, church plant in Japan in due course. And we do pray that you would be with him as he continues to prepare and to train for that and to learn the language. We do pray that you would provide him with all that he needs including uh, financially and uh, the health uh, that he needs. And we pray that uh, you would grant uh, Adam a fruitful ministry uh, in Japan in the years to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for those who are having a break at the moment, those who are on holiday, uh, those who are... um, away on the uh, conferences or, or camps uh, and those who will be going shortly. We pray for refreshment, we pray for encouragement, and we pray for spiritual growth, and we pray, uh, and we pray for protection as well. And we pray that uh, each one would return uh, in due course, ready to live uh, for your glory in the year ahead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for those known to us who are sick in mind, body, uh, or spirit at this time. We take a moment to pray for someone particularly on our hearts. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let's pray together uh, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And to continue to praise our uh, good 
God as we stand to sing, my Jesus, my Saviour. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please sit down. And uh, in a moment, Catherine's going to bring our reading and Gordon is going to speak. Uh, Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you that you speak to us through it. We thank you that you are such a good God for us to enjoy. And we pray that uh, as Catherine reads and as Gordon uh, speaks, your spirit would uh, encourage us, would stir us up, would strengthen us, and would cause us to uh, worship you more and more. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's reading is from Psalm 84, and it's found on page 4 of the service sheet. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty! My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and a swallow a nest for herself where she may have her young, a place near your altar. Lord Almighty, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They are ever praising you. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of spring. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. Hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, God Jacob. Look on our shield, O God. Look with favor on your anointed one. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those whose walk is blameless. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. This is the word of the Lord.
the vision, the hand, a handout that will help us to uh, follow what's uh, being said and also a few questions to think about uh, later today and during the week. Uh, there are some gaps to fill in, if you, that, if you like that sort of thing. They're a little bit more challenging this week, I think, uh, the missing words, uh, but we'll see what you think. Um, the Psalms are Psalms of experience. They're windows. We're looking through the window into what is actually, it's actually like to know the living God, and that includes all the ups and downs. Of course, the Psalms are very ancient, um, written hundreds of years BC, uh, but the God of the Psalms is God. He's our God. Uh, Hebrews 13 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So the Psalms are also a window in what it, into what it feels like being a Christian today. Uh, the Psalms ring a bell. They resonate with us. Uh, oh yeah, we think, I'm like that. Uh, that's right, that's me. That's what happened to me. That's what I did. Uh, that's what I think. That's what I need. That's exactly how I feel. And it's not just a look through the window either. It's an accurate picture of what it feels like to be a Christian. Uh, if you're investigating Christianity, if you haven't yet come to trust in Jesus, Psalms are a good thing to read and think about because they're realistic about Christian life and what it is actually like, what Christian experience looks like and feels like. And in Psalm 84, we're looking and learning what the Christian experience feels like in three main, main ways. Um, the first way is yearning or longing I've been thinking of trying to think of a better word than yearning. It sounds a bit old-fashioned. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. My soul yearns, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Um, so there's a, uh, an example of what we were talking about before, the excitement and the wanting to be there. Uh, what I didn't talk about before was feeling homesick. I don't know whether you've ever felt homesick. Um, and that feeling of homesickness is a, a hint of the strong sense that the psalmist feels at this point. He's excited, he can't wait, uh, but he's also a bit sick, so he's not there yet. Um, his homesickness is focused on the courts of the Lord, and it is really intense. Uh, this, this building, the temple, uh, established as the earthly dwelling place of God among his people. And, by the way, we think the psalmist is a man because he's one of the sons of Korah, it says in the introduction to the psalm who they were musicians in, in Israel uh, and he is he's feeling this intense uh, longing um, not because he likes old buildings and the guidebook is telling him to go there but, but because these are the courts of the Lord uh, this is God's place my heart and my flesh cry out for the living God Verse 2. He wants more than anything to go and be with God. If you went to the temple in those days, the services there were a reminder of God, and the sacrifices offered there were an assurance of sins forgiven. God himself said on day one of the temple, the day the temple was consecrated in 2 Chronicles 7, I have chosen and consecrated this temple so that my name may be there forever. 
my eyes, my eyes and my heart will always be there. It's his place. That's the place that more than anywhere else feels like home to the psalmist, more than anywhere else he wants to be. When we think of home, we think of where we belong, where we're at ease, where we're safe. We've thought a lot about safety in the pandemic times. The psalmist is saying, Lord, where I really belong is with you. First, he looks at birds. Um, some of the courts of the temple were in the open air, and the birds are nesting there. And the psalmist says, it's home for them, it's home for me too. It's where I most belong. A place near your altar, my King and my God. It's so good to be there. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, verse 4. They are ever praising you. These people are blessed, they're happy, because it's so great to be near you, the living God. And that's why he's yearning, because he's not there yet. This longing, it ought to attract our attention and our interest. Um, it's one thing to hear a claim, a statement, it's great to be with God. But this is more than that. This, the psalmist is saying he's desperate for God. Uh, he's lonely and sad without God. And we're hearing a real personal experience of someone who's come to know God and to know that it's great to be with God. And we're hearing testimony, the witness statement of that experience. I can't wait to be with you again. It's with you that I really, really belong. And we find that sense of yearning again and again in the Psalms. Psalm 42, as the deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, my God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When can I go and meet with God? He's looking for God as much as a raging physical thirst. Psalm 63, you God are my God, earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you, my whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. So here in Psalm 84, it's not a thirst, it's a homesickness, but it's a similar knowing that need of God with the urgency of being dangerously thirsty. And it's a feeling that dominates, takes over the whole body. You can't think of anything else when you're thirsty when you're that thirsty. And it's just a longing for being where he belongs. And this comes elsewhere in the Psalms, it comes in other places in the Bible, and it's distinctive of the Bible. Uh, the sense of a deep personal relationship which makes the writer so keen to know God better and better. There are commandments, there are proverbs, there are there is wisdom in other religions, but nothing like the warmth and the closeness and the longing of this cry in the Bible. And it's a Christian distinctive because we're talking about the real God who's in a real relationship with his people. And because he's made us, our hearts ultimately can't find our home anywhere else except in him. We rest in him, we're happy in him, we're devoted to him, and we long for him. Uh, I think that's quite challenging. Do I, do I always know that yearning for him? It is a mark of the Christian heart. Um, as Steve was saying earlier, God satisfies, nothing else does. Uh, we have tasted and seen that the Lord is good, and we long for more of him. Uh, Psalm 34. Taste and see that the Lord is good, blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Once you've known that level of connection, and that degree of security and happiness, 
and you've had great Christian fellowship and teaching that's really cleared your head, you're excited for Jesus, you want more. Longing for next time, for more of him. Or maybe you're in a tough time and you're desperate for what you once knew. That's also a characteristic of the Christian heart. Or you're in a dry patch, maybe. The Psalms confirm that the Christian life has its ups and downs. And one of the values of the Psalms is their kind of spiritual MOT. Uh, many of us here will own cars and we have to often have to send them off for an MOT. And sometimes they uncover surprising faults uh, that need sorting out. But actually we need to do, there's a good reason for having an MOT. And they sh- and the Psalms show us what the healthy Christian life looks like. And they can sometimes even highlight a sense of dryness that's crept in that we didn't realize was there, like an MOT does. It might, need that we, it might be that we need to say to God, please get me yearning again. Remind me of how good it is to know you. It might be that you're not a Christian at all yet. You're investigating, maybe, and you're hearing about all this, and it's a bit unsettling. Is there something really good here I'm missing out on? Well, there is. And you can have it uh, by coming to God and putting your trust in Christ. Augustine said to God, You have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. That's a real home. And uh, the second point is that we're traveling like the psalmist. Uh, Verse 5, blessed are those whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on pilgrimage. In those days, the people of God were supposed to travel, to meet up, assemble in Jerusalem three times a year for great festivals. So lots would travel. And it could be that this is the setting for this psalm, this journey, this pilgrimage to Jerusalem. They went because they had to. Um, But the person who wrote this psalm is talking about people that went not just out of duty, but out of joys. Their hearts are set on pilgrimage. They're longing to go go there and meet with God as he is. If you're yearning for God's presence, you will go to meet with him. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The autumn rains also cover it with pools. I'm not sure, I, I, well, I'm not an expert, um, and I have done a bit of research, but I'm not sure anyone work really knows where the place, the valley of Baca is. Uh, it might be just south of Jerusalem. But it seems to be on some people's way to Jerusalem, and it seems to have been a dry spot. This dry spot springs to life because they have set their eyes, their eyes are set on destination. Yearning is turned into going, so the excitement is building, and the hope is building, and it's taking over. Uh, This applies to us as well. The temple that once stood in Jerusalem is long gone. Long gone. There's no longer any need for it because God has given us something better. He gave us His Son, Jesus Christ. The temple stood for God's presence in the world. Jesus was and is God's presence in the world. And the way today that people from any part of the world can come to meet with God is by coming to put their personal trust in Jesus. There's no need for a pilgrimage to the Holy Land or anywhere else, just trust in him. That's what happens when you first become a Christian and the Christian life consists of keeping on trusting Jesus day by day. And we half understand this sense of physical travel because sometimes people will travel a a distance to get to a living church 
church is at a temple, but Jesus is there with his people and they want to meet the Lord Jesus and meet with his people. Uh, but the pilgrimage the psalm points to is the one we're all on if we're followers of Jesus through this world to the glories of heaven for the world to come. All through the Bible there's all sorts of evidence that this is the reality for everyone who puts their trust in Jesus Christ. Heaven will be a place of absolute wonder, absolute final destination, absolute worship, absolute joy. And we, as we come into the full, uninterrupted presence of our Lord, the Lord our God and his Son, the Lamb of God, who was slain for us on the cross. And all his people from every nation will be there. And what a great day that will be forever. Time and again, the Bible holds this hope out before us. And Christians are on the way to that heavenly hope. And that hope is one of the things that keeps us going through the tough times along the way. The Hebrew word baka is connected to weeping. The, the phrase veil of tears it comes from one translation of this psalm, referring to the really difficult places in life we might have to walk through. Who knows what we might face? in the years ahead, some great and happy moments as we journey towards heaven, but also some very tough times. If you're a traveler whose heart is set on pilgrimage and the hope of heaven, longing to be with Jesus, that will give you strength for the valley of Baca and make it a place of springs. They go from strength to strength till each appears before God in Zion. Hear my prayer, Lord God Almighty. Listen to me, God of Jacob. Day by day, we pour out our hearts to him and find, find strength for the journey. The film Chariots of Fire is 40 years old. I don't know whether anybody remembers it. Probably some people do. Um, one of the subjects of that film was Eric Liddell. He played rugby for Scotland. He won a 400 meter gold medal at, the, at those 1924 Paris Olympics, which the film uh, concentrates on. Uh, he'd been born in China in a missionary family, and a year later he set out and spent the rest of his life as a missionary in China. And he was famous during that time for the way he could uh, continue to live his life, even in the Valley of Baca a place of great difficulty. Towards the end of his life, uh, the invading Japanese forces took him prisoner and held him in an internment camp in tough conditions. According to Wikipedia, he busied himself by helping the elderly, teaching at the camp school Bible classes, and teaching science to the children who called him Uncle Eric. He was described by a fellow internee as the finest Christian gentleman it has been my pleasure to meet. And by another, he was overflowing with good humor and love for life and with enthusiasm and charm. He got up every morning with a friend at six o'clock. Um, he had to draw the curtains really tight unless the guards caught sight of his little oil lamp and Eric and his friend would sit silently at a low Chinese table, surrounded by sleeping fellow prisoners. And they had to sit really close together with just enough light to see. And they would read the Bible and they would pray and they would think about the day's duties and they would note down what had to be done. Eric was a man of prayer. He talked to God all the time, naturally. Uh, uh, like somebody who'd learnt this discipline and been given this inner discipline. His life was grounded in God, in faith and in trust. He died in that camp uh, in 1945, three months before 
liberation. The entire camp was stunned for days, so great was the vacuum Eric's death had left. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. Now, there's a person who made the valley of Baca a place of springs, not only for himself, but for also for many others in the camp with him, because day by day he set his hope and his heart on God, and he trusted. And that's something for us to learn as we set our hearts on heaven, And the third window into Christian experience is in verses 9 to 12, calculating, yearning, troubling, and calculating. The writer arrives at the temple, wow, and he says to God, please watch over the king because he's the one who guarantees the security of this nation and that's why we have this temple and please may we go on meeting in this temple so that we can meet with you. And then verse 2, verse 10, sorry, a calculation. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. A thousand, a thousand to one is a very large ratio. Um, he'd rather have a single day with God than a thousand anywhere else. Are there many places at which you can say that? Some incredibly special places, perhaps. One day is worth a thousand anywhere else, everywhere else. He says that of God because he is with God and that's where he belongs. It's a perfect destination. And just to make sure we've got it, he says in the second part of the verse, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. The wicked in the Psalms are those who are in, in God's world without God. He looks at them, he may look at all the wonderful things they have, and he says, I'd rather be here than with them. I'm just glad, glad to be inside. COVID uh, has affected everybody massively, and some people more massively than others. Um, one little group it's affected is sports fans, and in particular, perhaps rugby league fans. Um, they've had a really long wait to go to the matches. They had no matches at all, and then they had matches they could only see on the television or listen to on the radio. And then they were able to go. And yeah, it's nice to be in a better start part of the stadium than another part of the stadium, but the main thing is getting there and being there and in being inside where the action is. And notice the contrast. The house of the Lord, permanent, the tent of the wicked, temporary, fragile. There's something impermanent and insubstantial about the dwellings of the wicked. So this is his calculation. One day in your courts is better than a thousand anywhere else. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in your house than dwell in the tents of the wicked. The Bible covers other calculations, other reckonings of, other evaluations, really thinking about it. Hebrews 11, by faith Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be ill-treated along with the people of God, rather than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt, because he was looking ahead to his reward. Or the Apostle Paul in Philippians 3, he left behind a very promising career in the Jewish hierarchy, Jewish religious world, but whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own conferred by the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God 
on the basis of faith. These are people who have tasted and, and seen how good it is to be with God, the living God, and they realize that everything else pales in comparison. There is no comparison. The reason, uh, verse 11, for the Lord God is the sun and the shield, the Lord bestows favor and honor. The sun lights our way, a shield protects us, God bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those whose walk is blameless. Blameless doesn't mean we have to be perfect. It's a throwback to what Paul just said about righteousness. It means someone who in their inner self, deep down, is following Jesus truly, and the blamelessness is given, conferred on us, when we trust in the death of Jesus for our forgiveness. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. Blessed means happy. It also means advantaged. We've got advantages. Why is it so great to be a Christian? A Christian has been adopted into God's family, God's own family. Tremendous privilege, permanent, 24-7 access to God in prayer. A Christian has redemption through the blood of Jesus. Sins washed away. Nothing comes between us and God. A Christian has the prospect of glory ahead of us in heaven. A Christian has God the Holy Spirit in our hearts as a deposit and guarantee of heaven. A Christian has the privilege of being, belonging to God's worldwide people. A Christian has the reassurance of knowing God's purpose and peace in our life. A Christian uh, knows God's help and protection even through really tough times. That's why we sing. Great Christian distinctive to sing with joy because we have so much to sing about. Lord Almighty, blessed is the one who trusts in you. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. And let's remember that and let's apply it to future situations. Apply it when we're tempted to envy others who don't know God. Let's remember the blessings we have in Christ. Uh, count them out one by one. Apply that verse to the decisions we make. How do we use our life? We know that verse to be true. Do we want others to know that it's true? Doesn't it want to also make us want to press on in this pilgrimage to heaven to get to know God better and better and better? until the day each of us appears with him and before him. So what does it feel like being a Christian? There's a yearning, a longing for God because we truly belong with God in his presence. There's a traveling, a journey, eyes fixed on the future. And during that time, coming through those valleys of tears, difficulty, struggle, disappointment, as we continue to trust him day after day, meeting with his people, reading, remembering, considering his word, seeking his face in prayer. And there is calculating, uh, perhaps encouraging in ourselves thankfulness. Do we practice thankfulness for the blessings we have? And then applying that calculation daily in our attitudes and our decisions. Uh, let's pray. Lord, please give us increasingly this yearning for you. Give us hearts set on traveling to meet with you in glory. Keep us trusting in you, even through the valley of Baca, the difficult times, that we might make them a place of springs. And thank you for the reality of this great calculation that one day with you is better than a thousand elsewhere. We'd rather be doorkeepers in the house of our God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. 
please help us to feed on these thoughts from you uh, in the days and the weeks and the months and the years ahead. Uh, Amen. Jordan. I'm going to uh, finish our time <coughs> uh, continuing to focus on uh, Jesus, knowing Jesus, and the, um, how that satisfies uh, the thing that we long for, which is to see his face. We may not know this, so we're going to stay seated and uh, listen. Um, if you'd like to join in, um, as you get the hang of it, then feel free that uh, we're allowed to, but um, uh, we can also just listen and uh, uh, enjoy uh, these words and the truths that they contain. So when we see your face. We praise you, Lord Jesus, for that day that we can look forward to when we see your face when everything makes sense, when there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, and we will enjoy you forever. And in the meantime, we long, we travel, we calculate that one day with you is better than a thousand elsewhere. Amen. Let's see, say these words together from uh, Psalm 16. You, Lord, make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Amen. Why don't we say the grace together? May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Uh, do hang around for uh, chat. It looks like it's not raining, so we can chat outside um, and uh, have a great week. God bless.